here at Distributech 2023, one of the sponsors of these interviews, and these are interviews with thought leaders from around North America and the globe. Uh, our sponsors are H2 Scan. H2 Scan is uh, the leading sensor uh, manufacturer for hydrogen sensing uh, in a lot of different applications and transformers in uh, battery room safety, in uh, processes in safety and in industrial, and in the future hydrogen economy. So I wanna thank our sponsors and I wanna thank all of our guests. And I hope you enjoy this interview. My next guest is Fernando Garcia. Fernando is the practice lead for uh, HDR, and he can tell you what all that means, but uh, for HDR, and he is the vice president, practice lead of grid modernization. Has I got that right? That's correct. You got more yes. words in your title than everybody, but Fernando, thank Very you for nice joining us. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for having me. So um, tell me a little bit about how you got into the power industry as a whole, how you, not so much AD, HDR, but how long have you been in it and how'd you get involved in it? So I came, I'm actually from Colombia and that's where I grew up. And then I had a tennis scholarship and it allowed me to actually come to the United States. Wait, you had a tennis scholarship? Yeah, yeah, I, played, I used to play tennis. So. Okay, good, good. So yeah, so growing so you up. you could have been a tennis pro, <laughs> but you came into the power industry. I could have, I wanted to, yeah, it's very challenging, but I ended up coming into the power world, yeah, okay, yeah. Good. So I, you know, I used my tennis scholarship to go to school and I ended up getting an electri electrical engineering degree. Where'd you go to school? I went to Western Michigan University. Okay. All right. yep. I know it, and I went that's... to Georgia Tech. Oh, okay, very Mechanical good. Engineering. Yeah. Mechanical engineering. Mechanical, okay. very good. <laughs> so, you know, that's, that's really uh, how I started my career. I, that's how I came to the United States. Uh, growing up uh, in Colombia, we didn't have um, power. There were times where we actually had to have power with candlelights. Really? So, yeah, we had a, about a, a period of about a year where, you know, we had outages uh, and it's basically scheduled outages. So we didn't have electricity in certain times of, of the day. And that was one of the things that, you know, kind of drove me into the industry and just said, like, look, I can I can get a degree. I'm good in math, you know, and I can yeah. solve problems. So, yeah, that's uh, that's how it's an engineer. Bit. We solve yeah. problems. I love yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Did you start with HDR or no? I started uh, in the consulting industry, but I started with, with a different company. Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah. So tell me about now your career at HDR. How long have you been the practice lead and what does that mean, being the practice lead and vice president? That's a great question, okay. by the way. So um, I have been with HDR a little over 10 years now. Oh, that's a, that's a long time. It's a long time, yeah. And uh, I have been in the industry for about 21 years. Okay. And um, so what is you know a practice lead? And it's basically somebody that's looking out into the market, seeing what kind of trends are taking place, uh, what we should be investing in, uh, what type of uh, challenges our clients are having, how can we develop solutions to support our clients. Uh, so it's a little bit of an external interface, knowing what our capabilities are, where do we need to continue to make investments on, and so it's an external, internal, uh, it's a little bit about everything, but it's looking at the market. Kind of a market way. lead, you're determining what the market needs and then you're coming back and working between the companies. Tell yes. me about, um, what does HDR do? In, and you got one minute, you can tell me in one minute, what does HDR do? So we are an employee-owned firm. Okay. Uh, we have been around for over 100 years. Really? It's a, it's wow. a long-standing uh, company. I believe we are actually the largest 100% uh, employee-owned firm in the United States. Wow. And um, so we actually are, you know, solution providers. We solve problems, that's what we do. And we work in the power sector. We do work in the transportation sector, water sector as well okay. too. Uh, federal work is another area that we do work. Um, but uh, yeah, that's we're uh, engineers, consultants, planners, uh, scientists. Yeah, I love that. If I ever needed another job, now I'm retired <laughs> twice already, so I doubt that I'd ever need another job. I want to be a consultant <laughs> at your firm. Uh, um, you. yeah. So, uh, so given your practice lead role of what you just described, I'm going to put you on the spot. What are the problems that the industry is facing that we're trying to solve? There is a long list of problems. No, but you can, you can yeah. tell me all of them. We'll be here all day. But, um, but let's start with maybe kind of like the, the, the largest one. I think I, I look at the electric utilities, you know, they are our clients. And they basically have to go through this transition, you know, what we call, you know, the energy transition, right? How do we go to carbon free? How do we reduce carbon emissions? How do we meet our goals, you know, for sustainability? Um, how do we 
leave a, a better world behind, you know, and basically how do we make investments into the future so we can reduce the carbon emissions, right? So that, that is a big, a big challenge ahead of us. How do we change that generation mix? At the same time, how do we keep the lights on? How do we, you know, keep reliability? How do we, at the end of the day, I think the biggest challenge that we're seeing is how do we maximize those dollars, right? Because we don't have a limited amount of dollars, right? And, uh, and so I think that's, that's part of that mix of, of, of challenges that we see ahead. Uh, generation that's going away that we don't need anymore. And how do we replace that generation with maybe intermittent generation and generation that's not there all the time, right? And then on top of that, so we, we bring in storage into that mix, right? And, and at the end of the days, you know, I think we need to create a little bit more generation than what we currently have and that what's going away. On top of that, talk about additional load that we haven't seen that, yeah, right, yeah. with electric vehicles. So at the end of the days, how do we make the most of those dollars and looking into the future, what does the funding look like? I think that's a big challenge that, that we're seeing in the market. When you first said uh, the generation that we don't need anymore, I thought you were talking about people and I thought, oh, please don't, you need people like <laughs> no, us. No, that kind of you know, I wasn't even thinking, no, no, no. Generation yeah. of electricity, yeah, like electric generation. I got it, no, I got it, I'm saying that, right. Yeah. We're in the electrical field. Um, Excellent, because that you're exactly right of, of what we're doing. It's kind of like um, my analogy would be we're trying to change the windshield wipers on a car while we're doing 60 miles an hour in a thunderstorm, that, right? And it's very hard to do. Outside, yeah, you got to grab it, fix it, put the that one. And, and we're doing an adequate job, but we've got to do a better job. All of that is, is decarbonization, decentralization, digitalization. They're the three Ds that we've got. Yeah, yeah. We, we also, uh, at, at the same time, we've also got geopolitical things happening that, are, that is now, we want to, de in, in North America, we're trying to de-China from parts and supplies. I know there's a new uh, chip manufacturer going in in Arizona that needs $300 million worth of transformers for a chip factory, right? Yeah. Why are they doing that? Because the demand for chips in North America. So there's a lot of things that are changing right now on a global, a global scale. Your company's global, right? It's global, yeah. But yeah. you primarily work in North America. Uh, most, most of the projects that I'm involved in are in North America, okay. yeah. If you look at all of those problems and you're out there consulting, if, if you were to say to a company, hey, you've got to manage one thing, that's called change, right? Nobody wants change. Everybody likes the I way. I do. I like change. I will see. Yeah, <laughs> no, because you're one of those people. Right? You, you, when you know, there was a, there was a book out called "Who, uh, Who Moved My Cheese." Do you remember uh, that book? I've heard the book. Who I moved I the cheese, <laughs> my friend? Yeah. No, it, it was one of people don't necessarily. And the utility industry was really reluctant to change. It's happening faster now than it used to be, but there tends to be this hardening of the categories, as I call it. You know, not of the arteries. But how do you deal with people who are at the utility that think we're moving too fast? People that are at the utility moving too fast, well, I, I guess... That first, think that thing. we're moving too fast. So, one of the things, when I started my career, you know, so I, you know, I started doing substation design, and uh, what we have in substations are these, these relays, these protected devices, and the technology that was coming on these relays was going really fast. And what we used to do at the time was, if something hasn't been working for, let's say, 20 years, we don't use it because it's not proven. And so there used to be a window where we wouldn't try, think, try think things out, new technology, because it wasn't proven. So where we are today is you know, 21 years later. And what I am so happy to see is that, oh, you know, we're seeing new technologies. Oh, we have hydrogen, right? We have fuel cells, we have electric vehicles, right? And we have battery energy storage systems. So as these technologies are coming up, right, what we're doing is let's go try it out. Let's pilot it. Let's see. Let's test it out. And so I, I, have, I think that we are moving away into a place where we are being more dynamic. We are changing uh, utilities are balancing out these pilot projects, balancing out, you know, testing of new technologies, because the reality is the future depends on us trying out these technologies, right. investing on them. So I think that, I wouldn't say that we're moving too fast. I think that we are doing a lot better with, in comparison to maybe 20 years ago. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. 
And that, that whole idea of, uh, I, I like to say our industry is one that wants to be first to be second. <laughs> I, I, I'll try new tele technology. Now, has it been working somewhere? Used to be, well, you know, make it work for 20 years and I might talk with you. Now it is, is it working somewhere? But I need to, before we try the technology. You find a lot to, of, um, where there's rather than a, re a reticence to try new things, there is now a desire to try new things. And that's been a pretty significant change in the last five years that I've seen. One of the things that is happening, and you just kind of mentioned, I want to talk about HDR specifically, but as an industry, um, we used to be the old stay, hey, come to work in the power industry and you'll retire in 30 years and you'll have a nice pension. But it wasn't sexy, it wasn't exciting, nobody really wanted to be in the power industry. Today, we're changing the world. I mean, we're electrifying the world and we're changing everything. Decarbonization, the next generation loves thinking that they're part of something. So we have a story to tell now. Your company has a story to tell in what you do. Tell me about how, you've, how you manage within your own company, how you bring new people in, how you train them, how you uh, avoid labor shortages, which is what everybody's trying to do. <clears throat> that, that is a huge challenge in the industry overall, trying to bring in new talent, trying to keep the talent that you have, you know, happy, engaged, motivated, uh, you know, basically really looking to stay with you for, yeah, you know, right, make a right. career out of it. Um, I want to make a, a quick comment on the industry as well too, and I, I'm going to take a little detour because I think it's important. You were talking about, you know, who HDR is, what, what our industry is. We just came out of, give it or take, the pandemic, right? And you know, when we went into the pandemic and we were all asked to go home, I think you know, all of us were saying, okay, this is a scary thing, you know, but I'm going to be at home, at the comfort of my home. And what does comfort mean is. I got power, I got internet, I can communicate, and I think maybe a lot of people kind of took it for granted that, hey, we got power, right? Um, I took it as a, you know, an opportunity. How do we keep the lights on, right? We cannot just go home and not keep doing the work that we are doing, it's important. How do we upgrade you know, circuits? How do we change breakers? How do we maintain the electric grid going? It's extremely important, and I think that you know, we did a great job keeping things up. So I think going back to that innovation, right? Uh, okay, we used to go to a site. Maybe we can do that virtually, right? Yeah, Maybe yeah. we can change the way that, that we do things, right? Um, now, I think that's important to mention because it just kind of brings the importance of, of who we are for our society. I think that we were able to ride on with all the challenges that we had, the pandemic, and we didn't exact survey that, that issue, we, we actually helped by being able to keep the lights on. And I think that's an important component that maybe not a lot of people talk about. Work kept happening, lights were on. You know, we talked about the trucking industry, but nobody talks about the lights were on, you know, and the, the, the maintenance, you know, kept going and, and the projects kept going. So I, I think that's important. But going back to labor shortage, I think that's, that's a challenge today. Actually, we had a lot of uh, new uh, students that are coming out into the industry doing the rounds. I think that's fantastic, right? We actually... You mean here to, at this event? At Distributech, right. Uh, we had, you know, uh, a group of students that stopped at our booth. We talked about what is it that we do. We talked about how sexy it is, how cool it is, how important it is to our society. Uh, I think that's one of the things that we are doing, right? We're actually going to talk to schools. We're actually talking about what this industry is, because I, I think in the past nobody really talked about it. It's right, like, oh, right. you know, like, yeah, maybe you get a job in, in that industry. But now today it's like, okay, this is what we're doing, right? We're changing the world. We're changing, you know, the way that we do things. We're investing into your future, your kid's future, right, uh, for a better society. And you can play a part into making that change. So uh, I think education is a big component. You know, once we have employees in the system, I think, being able to have a, a mentorship program that really has a connection for the new employees to really know, like, look, this is what my career looks like. Uh, have somebody that's vested into building the career with them, right? Uh, what are the opportunities available? Raising your hand. Oh, I want to take on that challenge, you know? So uh, I think today we have better tools to keep employees engaged, motivated, in the know, uh, seek out opportunities. Uh, when I started my career, you had to have X amount of years before you could manage a project. Oh, you know, like 
you know, you have to have 15 years, right? So today it's like, no, you know, can you communicate? Can you coordinate? Uh, can you, you know, uh, talk to a client? Can you get out of your shell and, you know, organize everybody? Okay, let's, let's give it a try. <laughs> so there is a lot of opportunities that are, are taking place and I think that's exciting. I think that's, uh, there is a lot of career advancement, uh, career opportunities, growth. And I think that's something that we need to do more of, share with everyone, like, look, there is an exciting career ahead, um, but it is still challenging. We are competing with other industries, and that's... that's the learning curve yeah. has shortened for people, and I think there's... Uh, the fact that you're engaged in your work earlier is good for people, because I think the next generation wants to know they're making a difference, and number two, that they're doing meaningful work, you know? Because you can't just teach them forever. At some point, you have to kick them out and say, go fix. Go, go manage a project, go do something like that. And I think where we are today as an industry is we, we used to do that, right? We used to shelter, you know, new engineers that are coming out of school. It's like, hey, you know, let me teach you a little something. Do a task for two hours, do a task for five hours. And now it's like, okay, here's a project. Go, go take it on yourself, right? Uh, give them as much as an opportunity to lead, even at an early stage of their career. Uh, to me, that's super exciting. You know? That is excellent. So thank you for joining us. My guest has been Fernando Garcia. He is with HDR, and they are a consulting and engineering firm. Do I get that right? That is correct. He's the yeah. practice lead for grid modernization, which is desperately in need. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so for much having for me. Man. Appreciate it. This has been an APC Technologies production, and we thank you for joining us. Our sponsors have been H2Scan and Distributech. And of course, the communities of APC Technologies, which is Transform Technology, Power Systems Technology, Green Energy Technology, and Women in Power Systems. So thank you. Mm -hmm.